imagine then as this higher consciousness in the future that can be like a lighthouse sending a message, sending a signal of the direction that we would like to, to go. Some people may know that Einstein quote, which I think is maybe even beyond what we're talking about mm -hmm. here, you know, but it was so provocative at the time he, mm -hmm. when he said the past, present and future are just illusions, although persistent, you know, persistent ones. I, th I think I'm not butchering mm -hmm. it a little bit there, but um, uh, so it was kind of this idea almost like that it's an illusion, the past, present and future. I think in this case, we're talking more about it's not it really it's not exactly that it's not real it's just more like we have these different ways to access it which is why the relationship part the relationship aspect is so key it's like how we're accessing how we're relating to it um so i'm curious also because i know with all the new physics and all that there's there's lots i remember maybe 10 years ago maybe it was more than that even now like hearing about an experiment where they discovered that time washed backwards a little bit you know all these things that were like blowing people's minds <laughs> just in terms of like using our current science as opposed to this more exploratory um, kind of technique um, to to understand our limitations, I think, you know, in the in the Western view of how we've been viewing it. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious to hear anything more about um, where I guess Western science has gone and and how you see that relating to temporality. Let me tell you a story. Uh, there is a linguist called Leda Borodsky. She studies how people perceive the reality, their reality in different ways based on the words that exist or not in their language. So she, uh, in her study, she mentions, she has a very interesting TED talk, by the way. She mentions that in some cultures, they don't have a different word for blue and green. So if you show the color blue and the color green, they are going to say that you are showing basically the same color. They cannot see difference because for them, it's not different. We can say the same in examples of, for example, uh, the um, Eskimo language that since they are in the middle of the ice, they have many different words to relate to ice. The ice that is fluffy, the, the ice that is wet, the, the snow that is more, uh, that comes in a, in a specific form. And for us, basically, when we talk about snow or ice, we have like, snow is snow, we would not think about these different formats or ways. Uh, but since they are so intertwined with nature in the middle of a region that snow is so present, they have many different words for that. And they can see, they can see different, difference for that. It's different for them. In the same way, when we think of time as a language, we can say that if we are in a society that only looks to the future as something that we need to accelerate it more and more and more to speed up, to be able to reach our next goals, and that the past is just a museum, a memory that we uh, should not look anymore because we need to look to the next elements that are coming in a linear way, this is what shapes our reality. And what I'm telling here is just like the culture that have diff don't have different words for blue and green, or a culture that have many different words for snow, we have cultures pres present today that they relate to time and they have a language to explain their reality, their experience and the re reality of time in different ways, in a more rich aspect other than this limitation of past, present, and future that I mentioned before. So, for example, there is in Swahili in Af in, in the African count uh, count continent, uh, we have uh, the Swahili perspective in the in the continent that we can uh, see words, for example, like zaza and zamani. Zaza is this time that they call the short time or the small time. That would be everything that is in our touch of like a period of immediate concern that we can look that is very close. And yes, it looks like linear that we are going from this moment to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. But then we also have Zamani that is called this long time or bigger 
uh, time that zamani uh, in Swahili is not translated as um, past or future, but it's this big time that can encompass all of these other perspectives. So this in, this small perspective that we'll do today looks linear, but this bigger one, it is one that everything is available at the same time. And then just like drops, we are coming moment to moment, dropping from Zamani to Zaza as events that comes to, to this time. So when Einstein uh, mentions that the past, present, and future are just a st stubborn illusion. He was talking that uh, we observe time in the present in a way that our brains can observe in this small perspective, the Zaza. But when we look to time in this uh, bigger overview, we can understand that these divisions doesn't exist. And Based on this perspective, the African culture also relates to the Zamani, this bigger approach of time, as a moment that if I am able to change in some way my perception, to look not only to this dimension of immediate concern, but to this long view, I'm going to be able to sync, to tune with my ancestors, not as a memory from the past, but they are here, present, being able to answer something that I am struggling right now, that maybe in their lives, they had the same struggle and they had have something to share with me. People from uh, generations ago uh, in this sense. And they can share these thoughts coming from this other dimension of time to this small dimension that we live here. So in this perspective, when we talk about uh, to embody the learnings of time is to understand that this uh, language doesn't mean necessarily different words, just like I, I brought here. Sometimes they can be related to you feel something in a specific part of your body. You can say that every time that I am anxious about my relationship with this person, I feel this pain in my chest. And what that that does mean this is also a, 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 a message, a word, uh, or that I feel that in my hips uh, I have this, I feel the urge to move every time I am happy, for example, or to dance. Uh, and these movements, they are also invitations to talk with the ancestors that are, pre the ancestors that are present in our bodies. So when we look to time in these ways, we start to learn new words or new languages that are present, not only in words, but also in these uh, events that are happening. A movement in our body can be an event. Uh, your attention to something happening in the specific moment can be an event. And one very beautiful uh, approach to that is instead of thinking of our ancestors in this place of the past, Imagine then as this higher consciousness in the future that can be like a lighthouse sending a message, sending a signal of the direction that we would like to, to go. Because the future is not written yet, so we have many different possibilities of paths that we could walk from today. And some of them, they are not quite nice, and we would not like to go there. They don't... Uh, bring the continuity of life in a good way. But there are some of them that we feel connected to this abundance and we feel that we are living our best and we feel that we are honoring the ones that came before of us. So in these paths, we can see versions of ourselves as these ancestors sending like a lighthouse, sending a tunnel of light of, that can come for us as an intuition, for example as these events that we, or synchronicities that are going to make us pay attention in a specific thing and to say, oh, maybe I should study more about that. Maybe I should pay more attention on that. Maybe I should talk more with that specific person because they can bring an idea uh, for me. And this is an invitation that I share with the uh, people that are interested in that is to allow yourself to, in silence, be able to invite these events 
to send messages from the future to you. This pro process that is also called for some um, as retroscopy, that is this way that I'm going to not see a order of cause and then effect, but an effect that precedes the cause. So how I can start to do something because, not because I had a reason, but because I had an intuition that make, made me find a reason to do that. And these are examples of how other cultures uh, look to time, but it is also the direction to where the science is, is looking right now. So uh, we have many different scientists that studying the uh, quantum perspective of physics are looking already to this process that I just described this uh, retro uh, retroscopy or this retrospective to look from things not in the order that we are used to look, cause and effect, but also effect and, and cause, uh, as this perspective that the quantum physics uh, also look as uh, particles that are in so intertwined that an information can be transmitted from one to the other, even in different moments of space or time. Because we are connected as particles in this, in this atomic level with all of these beings that were before as our ancestors and are going to be in the future. So it's very beautiful to see, for example, with the studies of the black holes in the center of the galaxy that the science is discovering so many new things about this energetic uh, aspect of the of the solar of the Milky Way as a galaxy and our solar system, and how many of these uh, cultures, these ancestral cultures, uh, were already looking to the stars. They were already uh, learning and talking about these things that for us before were magic, and today we are understanding that they are very rooted in science, but a science that we are still going to establish in the future. Yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it? How, how a lot of the new physics especially has made us realize that the wisdom of the things that, you know, were, were rejected as magic before. Um, uh, I'm wondering uh, if you, and I, I wanted to say too, that, that um, what you were talking about just really also gave me that sense of the empowerment of, of it. Um, using that relationship of time when you're speaking of it as events, because, you know, time isn't just this concept. When you get into the relationship with time, then it has to do with events. It has to do with, like you said, being caught, being open to being called from the future like that. So it's really quite, quite, it looks like quite a, um, I don't want to call it a rabbit hole because I feel like that doesn't do it justice, but I think it's maybe expansions upon expansions, maybe is a mm -hmm. better way to put it. It sounds like as, as soon as we start to really explore our relationship with time. Um, I'm curious because I was thinking even of entanglement when you were talking about yeah. uh, physics. Uh, so how we've learned that particles can influence each other across space when they've um, had a relationship. Uh, any other insights or or things you've noticed on this journey that have to do with our connection with each other? You've already spoken about connections with ancestors very movingly. It's beautiful to see that if we are if we understand that time is a spiral and we are events that are repeating again and again and again, we also understand that uh, life is in this process of finding ways to continue again and again and again and didn't start uh with us didn't start uh right now and for me it's very beautiful to look to this journey that is not only relating to our ancestors of some generations ago or some cultures ago but it's even beyond that and for me it's very beautiful for example how the mayan culture study uh these cycles of time in very long patterns they were looking to cycles of the days but also cycles of 13 days and cycles of the year as 13 moons that is the, the 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 cycle of the amount of months or moons that we have in a an year and with this 13 moons they had longer cycles of 13 years and then with that they had until the the, the cycles called baktuns that were very long and they had the cycles of 13 baktuns that were like 5200 uh, years that uh, they were already able to perceive 
patterns repeating again and again and again, just like we see a day that starts and we and ends, and we know that the day is going to start again tomorrow. The same is happening, but in a longer cycle. We have things repeating in these longer cycles. So when we uh, look to the the big events happening in the society today as things that maybe we went through these things as a human as humanity as a planet before we also understand as a new invitation to stop and to pay attention in how we can find different ways to solve uh this these challenges around so for me it's very important uh what i learned with bio akomolafed he's a uh, nigerian uh man that is a, a philosopher that he says that maybe the way we are looking to the problem and the way that we are trying to solve the problem is part of the problem. And we need to find new ways that we understand that today we are part of the problems that we are trying to solve. So we are not going to be the heroes solving that if we don't look to ourselves as these individuals that need to hold and embrace the change first. When we are able to hold the change and embrace the change individually, we are going to be able to hold the change uh, in our relationships and we are going to be able to hold the changes, embrace these changes as communities and as countries and as continents and as society and humanity in general. But we cannot do a, a, planet, a transformation in a planetary level without thinking in this local individual level as well. When we talk about systems, the systems are the relationship in between all the agents of the system. So it's not, we cannot think of, we need to change the system that we are living today without change the dynamics in between the agents of the system. So how I can change the way I relate to the others that are around me is essential to change the system that we talk so much today that is a uh, 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 essential move that we need to do to navigate change. Yeah. I mean, it's really that, that wise advice to be actually living it, including in how we relate to other people. Um, and that's, that is what causes the deeper change. Um, as the, as we come to our, the close of our time together, I'm wondering, let's see, I'd like to hear how people can find you, of course. Um, and then maybe just any final thoughts or if you have somewhere people should start in thinking about all of this. For sure. Uh, you can find me in the uh, Temporality Lab website, that is temporalitylab.com, and also uh, in our social networks that are also using the same handle, Temporality Lab, and also in my uh, own social media networks as Gust, N-O-G-M. So Gust of G-U-S-T, N-O-G-M. And as a final thought, I would invite our community of listeners around to also think of the cycles of your life, not in a linear way, only the years of that past until here, but also with these meaningful events that happened until now. And sometimes it's very hard to remember things in a non-linear way or to think about the cycles. So I also would invite you to start your own uh, navigation journal. I think to the best way to be present in the in what is happening in the uh, in, in the present, it is to train this awareness. Uh, for example, writing or thinking of what is happening right here, right now, and with the sum of the days, we are gonna start to see patterns, repetitions, things that I am writing again and again some concerns that I, I was not that aware, but then, oh my God, I'm writing about this again. I should do something about it. Uh, but then we are only aware when we create a tool to pay attention on it. So this navigation journals uh, is, a, is a good way to start to be more aware as a time traveler in your own relationship with time. Thank you so much for everything you've given us. I think I'm going to have to rewatch this a couple times myself because there's just so much we covered in a short amount of time. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.